So final part on radical substitution mechanism and here looking at uh, side products, uh, other issues and, and a summary. So other reaction which which can occur, we could have uh, a radical, if it bumps into anything it'll react. So a CH3 radical could bump into CH4, but all you'd get there would be a, another CH3 radical and another, another CH4. So nothing terribly interesting has occurred there. Similarly with a chlorine Cl dot could bump into a chlorine molecule to give you a different chlorine molecule and a different chlorine radical. So it, it is a propagation step, the, the radicals are moving through the substance, but uh, it's not forming any different products. However, you could have different uh, radicals bump into each other. CH3 could bump into another CH3, and that would give you an ethane molecule. So that would be a possible side product. Uh, and similarly, if you've got uh, your wanted product, the chlorinated product here, that could bump into a Cl radical. The sequence could kind of get going again, and you could have a dichloro, trichloro, uh, a tetrachloro product. This will rather depend on how much chlorine there is around, but if you've got a lot of chlorine around, then you can end up with these products. So uh, overall, it's uh, because it's a chain reaction, it's explosive, it can be unpredictable, we end up with lots of side products, uh, but it is actually useful for making chloroalkanes from otherwise unreactive alkanes. Okay, one issue which I just want to talk about briefly, you could say, well, why doesn't the reaction all go back in the other direction? You know, we've got all these radicals, you could just uh, end up with forming uh, chlorine molecules and uh, methane that could form if these were to break apart. And it is an exothermic reaction, and that exothermic reaction means that the equilibrium lies towards this side. And we can explain that in terms of bond strength. So the bond strength of CH is kind of equivalent to the HCl, so that doesn't make much difference. But if you look at the CCl-CL bond, that's rather weaker than a carbon-chlorine bond, and therefore this extra bond strength here kind of drives the reaction that direction. So here's a summary. There's the overall reaction the reactants, products, and uh, conditions, UV light. Here's the different steps, so the initiation step, two propagation steps. This is the chain reaction part, forming the radicals, which then go and react with other molecules in there, and then two termination steps, one uh, CH3 with a Cl dot, giving you uh, one of the desired products, or you could just have two chlorine radicals bumping into each other to form a chlorine molecule. Okay, that's it. Uh, here's a little puzzle, which says uh, match the pairs of reactants and products. And uh, I guess if you can do that, you might be able to decide whether it's initiation, propagation or termination. OK, thanks for watching.